Welcome back. This is Chile Davis, and I'm back to do another video. Um, this is the channel where we talk about my top stocks. We also talk about other wealth strategies, uh, such as uh, using credit to leverage to gain access to other assets, such as crypto and real estate and other wealth building assets. So the article I'm reading today is talking about American billionaires got $434 billion richer during a pandemic. It says U.S. billionaires saw their fortunes uh, soar by $434 billion during the lockdown. Uh, Bezos and, and, and Mark Zuckerberg had the biggest gains. Bezos added $34 billion to his wealth, and Zuckerberg added up to $25 billion. So these are the billionaires um, during the pandemic. They added uh, trillion or excuse me, billions of dollars to their asset collection. Uh, so uh, it says Elon Musk among the largest percentage gain of billionaires uh, during two months, seeing his net worth jump by 48% and two months to $36 billion. Uh, Zuckerberg was close behind and uh, there were some losers, especially for your billionaires in travel and hospitality industries. Ralph Lauren saw his wealth drop by $100 million to $506 billion. And John Pritzker saw his wealth drop by $34 million to $2.56 billion. Now, the reason why I talk about this is because um, the fastest way to get the you know, uh, financial freedom uh, is basically buying assets. There is a, um, uh, and, and many people don't know what an asset is. An uh, asset is something that appreciates over time. That could be real estate, it could be cryptocurrency, that could be stocks, uh, it could be an art collection, it could be a number of things. So realize these billionaires, they create businesses and that's the fastest way to become rich, uh, especially during a certain uh, time of economic uncertainty when like in Jeff Bezos situation, everyone bought from his business uh, because it was all online. So uh, whenever you're growing a business, you have to think strategic, but uh, in Jeff Bezos case, most people flock to uh, you know, amazon.com. So let's look at one of the reasons why the ordinary uh, citizen does not become free is because they don't basically understand cash flow patterns. So I'm gonna show you the cash flow pattern of the ordinary citizen, specifically the middle class. And if you look at their income statement, their income is derived from a job. Uh, and, and today, even more or less, more people are becoming smarter and deriving more of their income from stocks. So that's why I talk a lot about stocks on this channel and I highly encourage people to get involved with stocks. So as you can see, the middle class has no assets. Uh, while the uh, rich and ultra rich, they own stocks, real estate, and also they didn't include one in here, but it's actually called a business. Uh, Jeff Bezos, he, uh, he you know, owns Amazon uh, and all this assets that you know, are included in it. And uh, during the pandemic, because people had to use his business, it essentially grew, uh, which is an asset. Uh, while most middle class people they build their lifestyle on things such as liabilities like mortgages, car loans, and credit card debt, and school loans. And unfortunately, during this last uh, pandemic, uh, when these jobs were wiped away, their income was wiped away. So that is the main reason why uh, the only people who benefit during these times of economic, uh, you know, crush situations, uh, like where jobs stop is, you know, happens like it did is the billionaires. Uh, the billionaires, they own the real estate, they own the stocks, and it's all strategic. Uh, if someone um, is very rich, they learn how to keep their, make their money work for it, and they learn how to keep its value. Uh, I talk a lot about stocks is because they see stocks appreciate over time. So let's just look at the stock chart of Nike uh, stock. And if you look at the last five years, uh, the stock has done nothing but gone up. So back in 2016, the stock was worth $50. And today, the stock is worth three times as much at a, roughly $150. So what the billionaires uh, and other millionaires have done have figured out that if they own stock, 
um, and that's this is one of the assets. Then it keeps up with inflation. It keeps up with the need of growing economy needs, and um, you know they just convert it. They're either buying stocks or they're buying real estate. Now, real estate is very flashy. People love to say, "Hey, I own." you know, 20 acres, I own 40 acres of land. Sounds really sexy, but the only problem with real estate is it can be highly illiquid. That means if you ever need, it, need money or something, you might not be able to um, uh, take care of uh, a certain transaction. So it is roughly through the wealth uh, explanation that most time people own like 10% in real estate, 10% in stocks or, or 30% in stocks. And then they own other assets like intellectual property. So that might be a patent and they up no other items such as uh, interest bearing notes. So let's say for example, they own a note that's $100,000 and they're an interest bearing it when it's 10%. They still earn uh, you know, $10,000 on that $100,000 note per year or however long it's structured. A note can be structured many ways. It's basically a loan to someone and you know, uh, the millionaires and billionaires, they make loans all the time, but they don't call it a loan. They call it maybe a note. Um, they make a loan out and they get paid the interest off it. So that's a, a very high level uh, a note. But these other items such as bonds and stocks, the average OC can do it. While most of the average OCs, they don't have these stocks. They do own stocks in their 401k, but they have no control of that. So that's the problem with you know, telling the middle class, hey, go ahead and get a, a 401k because they have no control of that. The 401k is only meant to protect you during the retirement years of your life. It's not meant to protect you during your active years of life. So the, the key strategic thing that most people should be doing is acquire assets from age 20 all the way up to 60. And if they don't, uh, spend the assets and they should, you know, pass them on to uh, their grandchildren and such. So let's take a look at what one of the billionaires says. Uh, Ray Dalio is one of the greatest billionaires there is, and he talks about his principles on how the economy works. And this is a very simplistic video. Um, it just shows you exactly how debt and credit works um, and how if spending slows down, it really hurts the middle class. While if spending goes up, it really helps the businesses uh, and it helps the business owner. And it shows how the, the interest rates of the, the government plays a role, whether credit is extended or whether credit is decreased and how interest rates control that. Um, so he also does a lot of great simulations in this video. Um, this is like one of the best videos I've saw to explain what happens during a stock market rally and then what happens during a stock market um, decrease. So if I look here, it shows here what happens when the stock market tumbles and credit uh, stops being available. And, you know, that's what happens when assets do go down in value. That's why we talk about stocks. But just how they, they went down in value during the 2020 crash, they went back up 10% higher after the recovery. So it, you know, it helps the wealthy again. So again, it talks about, you know, what's the facilitation of distribution of wealth in the economy um, and the wealth. And also what allows the, you know, US government, central government to increase spending and deficit and it's all based on goods and services. And basically what the central government does, they try to balance the interest rate on how much money they loan out and how much, uh, based on how much goods and service are being produced uh, while not trying to loan out too much money, but at the same time paying a fair interest rate on bonds. And at the same time, maintaining uh, the unemployment amount of people. So this is an excellent video. Um, it shows uh, of recent last year, we did a lot of printing of money and it shows how printing money can easily abuse and because it's too easy to do and how it helps the economy at the same time, it hurts the, the, the debtors or the, the least that can defend against it. Um, and it shows uh, two to three uh, depressions we've had uh, and then 
reflation, a seven to 10 year span. Uh, and then what's happened, could happen, what we would call a lost decade of workers. Um, and, you know, it says rule number one, don't have debt rise faster than incomes because your debt burns will eventually crush you. And so this, again, is a quick video about cash flow patterns, uh, poor versus middle class versus rich, and why the billionaires uh, during this last recession got $434 billion richer. So I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please like, share. I also have this video below in my comments, uh, Principles of Ray Dalo. Um, and you can watch this video for yourself and watch the entirety. I've watched this video several times. So thank you and have a great night.